So yes. the other thing about second, one of the second city things um, is working to the top of your intelligence? Yes. Have you ever heard of that? You. Yes, I did. And that is what the other that one. Mean? That means to don't play down to the audience. I, uh, this is, uh, I also tell the writers and, and students that I, that I teach is that you never play down to the audience. When on Mad TV, I, I, not to bore you on that, but when, when the ratings were going great and we were beating SNL in teens and we were beating us, we were at least one and two with SNL in every market and, and our urban market audiences were huge and we were beating them in that sense. And we were doing it because I was doing what I, what I wanted to do, which was to get to have the writers writing what they want to write, what we thought was funny, what was making us laugh. And obviously you keep in mind that you've got a big teenage audience and all of that, but you don't write down to the teenagers and not necessarily write to them. I always found that, that younger audiences like the idea that they don't get everything, like the idea that they're playing catch up. And, I, and when, I, uh, when Conan O'Brien, who was a big SCTV fan and always likes to talk about how SCTV influenced him and wanted to get into show business, he always said that he said, I didn't get every reference, but that, I like that about that show because it was, it was playing catch up a little bit. And he, thought, he really thought that was kind of cool. And because, because it was written intelligently, it was funny, it was accessible, but it was clever. There were left turns in our writing. And so I, I try to preach that kind of stuff in terms of that. What happened was some of our executive producers on the executive side thought, well, we've got teenagers, let's write down to them. Everything teenage. And that's exactly what the teenagers did not want because the stuff, if you're at the time, if you're doing Britney Spears jokes or Taylor Swift, they hear all of the stuff they hear in school. They like the stuff. They like to be surprised. Audiences love to be surprised and comedy is surprised. And, and they wanted you to stay a step or two ahead. Yeah. Now, that's, that, I think that's true for any type of writing. Is you want to try to be, work at the top of your intelligence, that doesn't mean you can't do broad comedy and you can't do uh, comedy that's, uh, that's not heady in any way or that. But, but you're working to the top of your intelligence and your comedy is at the top. And you can surprise the audience and stay a step ahead of them. Not give away everything at the beginning and, and not create characters that are one-dimensional, you know, really create interesting, deep characters while you're doing your work. And I think that's it. And they, that always taught me is, is don't settle right to the top of your intelligence as much as you possibly can. And the audience, I'm telling you, the audience, at Mad TV, all the emails we got were the scenes that surprised the kids, especially the kids that wrote in, that surprised them, that they didn't see coming. Those are the scenes. It wasn't the scatological or the, what they, the edgy scenes, which in Hollywood, edgy means that you say, you know, the F word every three words. But that's not what it is. The edgy stuff is dealing with things that people are uncomfortable to talk about or, or you're treading kind of new ground or you're saying something that's really original and you're being edgy in that way. Uh, there are great edgy comics out there.